Hey, welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. Fighting with My Family is a comedy based on the true story of WWE superstar Paige and the lady who plays Paige's mom in this film, also very, very well known for the evil Cersei Lannister on Game of Thrones, for which we are huge fans. Great to see you, Lena Headey, here on the Rich Eisen Show. Hello. But a pleasure to have you here. I'm a big fan. I'll just start off the interview that way. I don't care. Just throwing Phew. it out there. Okay. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> big time. Big time. And uh, I do want to talk about this film that you are in, this uh, delightful film that you are in about Paige and her way to WWE stardom. How did you get involved with this film? Um, well, I, I'd seen the documentary. It was a uh, Channel 4 documentary years ago, mm -hmm. and I loved it mm -hmm. because it's sort of all that is great about England and our eccentricities and sort of just being who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and so the Knight family are quite extraordinary. They're passionate wrestlers and they raise their kids to be the best. And Paige and her brother, Zach, end up auditioning for the WWE. And Paige gets in and she creates history as the youngest kind of diva to win. Right. And, the championship. and this and The Rock is a producer in this film. He's yes. in, Dwayne Johnson is but in the film. But also they've met this the part where they meet in the story and the film is true. Mm -hmm. She he met her on her kind of way up. So when we see him meet her, yes. that, that's actually a reenactment yes. of what the way this thing really happened. Yeah. So are you a wrestling fan at all? Have you have you I can't taken say I'm a wrestling fan. Mm -hmm. Um I used to go when I was little, my dad would take me to like the janky wrestling. What is the janky wrestling? It's there are two amazing characters. They're both dead now. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they were called Giant Haystacks and Big Daddy. And they were two <laughs> really big, yeah. drinking, smoking wrestlers. I mean, humongous. Yeah. And they would just kind of belly slam each other for hours. And like, for, it was really circusy and crazy. And mm -hmm. my dad would take me and I was like, oh, I don't want to go. And by the end, I was on my feet kind of cheering because it's such mad entertainment. Sure. And it's amazing how popular it is. It's always been popular. It's, yeah. been, it's immensely popular now today. You but know? it's like the underground theater of it all is, is right. bonkers. Giant, what was it again? You have to look these guys up. So you have to Can see you look it up, Chris? Giant Haystacks and Big Daddy, whose real name was Shirley Crabtree. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. They're, they're amazing looking. I, I could pretty much. Have you found them? Yeah. Have you yeah. found yeah. them? Have yeah. you, see, you see what they are over there? Okay. They, I, they, I mean, they are not WWE, these guys. I can only imagine the conversation that had to, like, okay, Shirley, we can't throw you out in the ring as Shirley Crabtree. No. Let's, let's workshop <laughs> here what we can come up with. Yeah. You have to, also, he wore like a unitard. You know, the ones that kind of go down past <laughs> yes. the nips. And, uh, yeah. Well, that's that's old school wrestling old is, school. The, is the unitard, you mm -hmm. know. So you that's see how, all, all the fruit and veg and now, on display. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a good look. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the produce that's yes. all out there for the fresh, sure. Fresh, not so fresh. And now you're, and now you're in a movie about it. And uh -huh. and again, so uh, what did you learn about uh, about Paige throughout this whole process that you you may not have already learned about the well, story I, here? I mean, the documentary is fantastic because it just it shows you you kind of live with them mm -hmm. through this journey, and uh, it's just sort of extraordinary ambition and passion and drive from this family, right? Um, And then by, we did a bit of training, which you kind of think, oh, you know, I'm kind of physical. It's, sure. But it's really, really hard <laughs> and painful. Well, your training it did what? I mean, you, you needed we to did We did the first fight in the film. We, we did that. We learned that whole fight. Okay. Which was really, I mean, I'm such a tomboy, so it was great fun kind of mm -hmm. slamming each other around the ring. Right. But it's hard, man. Like, it's intense what they do yeah i mean it's all it's scripted but you know it's still you still have to yeah, and you, you make a mistake to, you you're not it's not good yeah the mistake is the bad part yeah that's for sure yes so you say you're a tomboy lena Heady here on the rich eisen show did you play any sports in the uk growing up or no i did i played netball and i played we played hockey a lot in england like freezing cold blue knees hockey yes you, you were like a grinder in the corner on the uh, skates or whatever? Like, would no, you play no, no, not that hockey, like okay. British hockey. What is that? On grass. Field with hockey? A stick. Yeah, yeah, field hockey. Okay, that's what, I'm sorry. I mean, we're, we're, we're stupid over here where we call st certain sports differently. <laughs> was, yeah, field hockey. Okay, yeah. So field hockey. Yeah. 
And I've seen netball. I've seen video of netball. I'm totally confused. It's like by stoned netball. basketball, <laughs> where it's just like the, the we 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 uh, actually there was a video that went viral on Twitter uh, late last year of the championship of netball, right? Where somebody scored from literally six inches away from the basket after the referee stopped everybody. It was yeah. like a free shot from like six inches away, and it went in, and then everybody started celebrating. And all of us Americans who had never seen netball were like, "What the hell is what that? What is this game?" <laughs> right. Yeah. So you, you're are you are you well versed in netball? Can you what what was that? What do you remember it at all? What was I your mean, I was career? I was young. We had like okay. a mini bus that would take us to little to, you know tournaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, against the other schools. Okay. But I played center, which is the one that can go everywhere. Right. Yeah. And you can score. Mm -hmm. Um. But we used to swap up. It was just fun. Okay. You know? All right, so you had some game, a little bit of game as a very young person. A little person. bit of game. Okay, sure. Yeah. Now, did you shoot uh, Fighting With My Family before or after the last season of Game of Thrones? Before. Okay, so this is in between You're seasons. not going to get anything out of me. Now, look, I've interviewed Kit Harrington before, okay? And I know that it's like a vault. It's like you would be... Actually, you could get anything out of Kit. <laughs> He didn't. He didn't really give anything away. He was good. He was pretty good yeah, about was he? it. Good about it. Yeah, he was, good about it. he was pretty good. Maybe about he's it. had lessons. So you're now you're assuming I'm going to try and get something out of you. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want. I want to be surprised. Okay, then we're good. But I have. I have <laughs> read. I have read that you know that you uh, you, you were part of the last day of shooting, right? Uh, well, my. I mean, my last day. Your last day. Yes. Was not technically the last day of shooting. No. And that's giving nothing that's away. That's giving nothing away. Because we don't shoot in any order. Okay. Now, you strike me as a very lovely person, Lena. This is true. Okay. You strike <laughs> me as a very lovely person with a, with a great personality and very sweet. How the hell do you become Cersei Lannister? How the hell does that happen? Uh, it's the real me. I keep her hidden. Uh, no. I mean, it's to play the bad guy yeah. is just such good fun. You know what I mean? I can do all the things I can't really do in my life. Well, like, <laughs> I'm kidding. I was about to say, I'm like, I'm like trying to think, like, is there, is there some form of 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 evil uh, concoction underneath this sh show studio that could go up at any point in time and Maybe. take us all out? Maybe I planted it earlier. Look out! But so, you, so you just love just chewing up the scenery and and, yes, and doing that I sort mean, of thing. It's, it's what we do. It's well, fun. When you first got the first ever Game of Thrones script, yes. What did you think when you first got it? No one will ever watch this. No kidding. No. Why did you think that? I think because we were all, when you shoot a pilot, there's kind of no money. And so it's, it was really funny. There was no, there were no chairs for us. It was kind of bonkers. What do you mean? Well, because there was no money put into it. So when you do a pilot, it's like, we don't know if it's going to go or not. So you just go make it like in a tent in the cold. And so we were like, what are we doing? You know, and then it came out and it was just, People loved it, and so I guess we all started going. Oh, I guess we're we're gonna have jobs. This is amazing. So the uh, are you saying the the Iron Throne was initially made of like spray painted styrofoam? Is that what you're saying? Yes. No. I mean, like not just really. like you know, like it was just the the craft shop just threw it well, all. We together. shot the pilot somewhere completely different, and then we finally moved to Belfast, and we had stages and all that stuff. So you know, things like that, obviously, just uh, mm -hmm. it makes sense. They grow and they grow, and so. Every year we were like, oh, I guess we're really, this is really a thing. Did you know that your, did you know that your character was going to survive season one even before when you took the gig? Yes. Or you did? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I knew up until the walk of shame, like that was, that was the beginning to the end. And then I didn't know beyond that. You, you mean when you first got the gig, you knew that you were going to live to the walk because of the books? Yes. Is that what you were saying? No, no. David and Dan were like, this is what we have for her. Like, this is where she goes. Um, well, they had the walk of shame planned out all the way from Jump Street? Yes. Hmm. No kidding. I mean, those boys are very clever. They they had a plan all along for all of us. And it was slow, you know, the reveals were slow. And that's what makes it so exciting. So then season six script comes. You're flipping through the pages to yes, see if, if, if you've I'm met alive. your maker. Right. Every season. All right. Then what about the final season? When you got the script, what did you do with that? Same thing. I think all of us were like... <laughs> Okay, I'm still in. Okay, so which one was happiest by the end? I can't tell you that. Mm, that was a sneaky way of like doing that. That was, that that was, that was nice. That, that was, was so smooth. That was creative. 
See, I didn't even, by the way, for the radio audience, I didn't even look at you when I said that. I was looking down no, at you just notes. Threw, it was like by a By the way, I wasn't away. looking down at anything. I was just like, I'm not going to look at her when I say that. Maybe, <laughs> I'll, maybe I'll actually get an answer. Who are you most concerned from the cast that is actually going to give something away? Okay, but that's good. He's passed the test. What do you mean? You can just butter him up with a bit of booze. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, man, we've got so much around here, too. We've got to book him again and just, you know, that's just water in our get mugs. Get him that are... sozzled and I'll tell you everything. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. I asked him this question. I will ask you this. What is the craziest fan theory for your character that has been presented to you by a fan? Um, I don't really. I mean, I haven't read the things I've, you know, I've seen people have sent me stuff where they're like, she's going to turn into, you know, the Night Queen and stuff like that. Now you is said, that crazy? Is it? Is it crazy or is it possible? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, basically he said the one was that uh, everybody thought that he was the he's a dog. That he's one of the dire wolves. Interesting. Could that be true? Oh, see, now you're just trying to mm. just trying to throw out all these other Easter eggs here. Okay. Uh, I have a game called Start Bench Cut. It's like, you know, blank marry kill, where you have to choose one as their start one bench and you have to cut one you have to say that this person is not going to be involved here okay, okay. and uh, you, is that sports terminology these are sports terminologies <laughs> yes let's play like let's start like bench cooking? cut let's okay. let's, get, let's go play start bench cut with lena heady or on the it's time show. start start now bench just sit down and be quiet or cut okay the most imaginative form of revenge by cersei lannister okay you have to start one that's your number one choice bench is number two and you have to cut one, one that you said you're not really into. Okay. Okay. You you gave the the nun who shamed you to the mountain. You killed everyone, literally everyone, with wildfire, or the kiss of death to Alaria San's daughter right in front of her. Uh, I would start by giving Septu Unella to the mountain. That's your favorite one. Yes. Um, bench. The wildfire and cut uh, Laria. Although, all they got to tell you though, the wildfire, Ooh. when that oh, happened, oh. the whole room I was in, because again, you watch this with just 10, 15 people, yeah. went crazy. They did. I mean, literally like jaw hitting the floor, because that is some serious. And then you just watching it from afar. Yeah, just having some wine. <laughs> watching, it, watching it go down. Is there wine in there? Is there no, the there? it's like some weird laxative. <laughs> <laughs> Some weird laxative. No, it's not. Really. Okay, I mean, fantastic. I love that. Juice. All right, next one. Things that made Joffrey Baratheon so evil. Start bench cut. The pressure of being king since birth. The fact that his uncle is actually his father. Pampering by his mother. Oh, Start pampering by cut. his mom. Start. It's, yeah. Uh, Baratheon bench and the other one cut. Just really? The, yeah. The pressure of being king since birth, you cut that? Yes. It's no pressure. The, it's, it was my fault. It was all my fault. So you blame it on the mother. Yes. You blame it on the mother. All right, next one. Which Game of Thrones season was the worst for Cersei? Season four, when Joffrey and Tywin went down. Season five, uh, when the High Sparrow led to the Walk of Atonement. Or season six, when Tommen... Uh, you know what? I think we're going to have to start with the Walk of Shame, because that was pretty awful. I think um, Tommen... Mm -hmm. She's not too happy. Dad didn't really love him, so we'll cut that. Okay. What was the walk of shame scene like for you? Uh, it was long. We did. It was three days. And three days. Yeah. We did it in kind of sections, and because they had to hide us all from the tourists and stuff. And brilliant Rebecca, who was my body double, mm -hmm. um, so we would just kind of tag team in and out the whole three days. Three days. Yeah. That's insane. How yeah. long that is. Oh my gosh. All right. And I've got the last one for you here. The best badass, The Mountain, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, or Cersei Lannister? Start mm, bench cut. No, you know. Yes. Start I'm, bench I'm cut. Gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to cut the mountain because he's dead anyway. And uh, he's a zombie. I think Cersei could take The Rock. Okay. Mm. She's going to start, he's going to bench. You're going to bench The Rock. And start your I'm own gonna character. Meet him. I'm so sorry. Yes. Never, okay. Look, it's okay. We're gonna make sure that the two of you get together. I have met the mountain in you person. Have? Yes. Oh my God. It, oh that my God. Is the, he's the hugest in, individual I've ever met in my yeah. entire life. It's bonkers. Yeah. I, I the amount of food he consumes. What do you mean? Well, it's like we have to cut because Hathor has to have his seventh chicken of the day. <laughs> 
so I'm he, not joking. He dominates craft service. Yes. Is that what he does? He's out I mean, there? they literally bring him like a feast every hour so he doesn't faint. He just kind of eats. That's amazing. That's some quality information. All right. So, yeah, <laughs> so um, I don't even know what to ask because you're not going to give anything away at okay. all. My lips are sealed. Okay. Uh, where, okay. Where are you going to watch the finale? You yourself, Lena, Petey. Uh, Probably just on a sofa with my tiny children. No, the I'm not. I'm gonna watch it with some mates, with some booze. Uh, okay, and just toast off. Yeah, Cersei. And say how what an amazing, amazing nine years. Okay, so Cersei Lannister will be in the finale of Game of Thrones. I think I've just <laughs> learned that. Did I just get that out? Did I just work? Yeah, Thanks. So. Yeah, it sounded yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Okay, let's go with that. Did you shoot alternate endings to throw anybody off? Do you think? Oh, that's a shrug of the shoulders. I know nothing. They don't good question, tell me anything. That's a good question. This is okay. I'm done. We do what we're asked. I'm trying my best. You are awesome, <laughs> by the way. Oh. You are awesome. In this film, again, that everyone should see in, in theaters nationwide yes. this Friday. It opened up on both coasts on Valentine's Day, Fighting With My Family. It is just a, it's a fun, fun, fun movie. And you don't even need to be in wrestling to actually uh, love the story. And then you are awesome in Game of Thrones on behalf of me and all my friends and my wife. She can't get, she just loves you, man. Oh, thank you, you really, very much. Absolutely. Lena Headey here on The Rich Eisen Show. I am Lena Headey on Twitter as well as Instagram. Check her out. Fighting with my family in theaters nationwide on the 22nd this very Friday. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.